Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford, friends. And thanks to our presenting sponsor, the Coffee Consultants Mastermind Group, a new six week program starting in July 2021 for the first time. If you are interested in becoming a consultant in the coffee industry in the next few years, please consider taking this course. I promise it will be a game changer for you. Today on the podcast, we are discussing a very important subject right now. How long should a barista stay in the job of a barista? Now, why this is important right now is because People are wondering why is it worth being a barista after the pandemic showed, the pandemic that's still going on, I might add, but the pandemic really gave people the opportunity to reassess what they were doing. And by getting to experience life typically with a financial handout from a government, people were understanding that the quality of their life was significantly increased when they had more money to live off and life got a lot nicer and so people are reassessing should I be going back to this job as a barista or shouldn't I and if I go back what are the new terms under which I will stay so today we're going to talk about how long you should stay in a job as a barista either at a particular workplace or in your career as a whole In the next episode, we're going to talk about what is in your, let's say, what prospects do you have in your life after a barista in the coffee industry? So today, what is it that should be on your radar when you're looking to make the decision, should I stay in this job? When we look at just your workplace. There are a number of things, having been a barista for 15 years and I look back at all the jobs that I had and I consider the places that I didn't stay long enough and the places that I stayed too long. I I want to offer you some, um, let's just call it wisdom, of some things that you should be considering. When small business owners open a shop, They have a lot more to contend with than what is perhaps in your purview. That's not your problem, but it is something that you need to be aware of because the demands that you may be making off your employer may be things that they're unable to deliver. Should that be your problem? Shouldn't that be your problem? Well, that depends on the demands. Now, if your demand is a greater pay rate, and your employer says no, that may be a legitimate demand that they are incapable of delivering to you because they're not making enough money. Sit down, have a chat with them, and perhaps they may be willing to open up their profit and loss statement and help you understand a cost breakdown analysis that shows you why they're unable to pay you an increase in salary. On the other hand, Culture is something that every employer should be delivering on. And as we see Gen Z starting to heavily populate our industry, Gen Z have a heavy requirement on culture. And I think that's an awesome thing because the generations that came before that, culture wasn't really a big deal for most businesses. So if you are in a job and the position that you're in is not delivering on the things that you and your employer negotiated at the time of interview. That's a hard, it's now time to leave. If your conversations with your employer are showing that they just seem to have dropped the ball. But if you see that there is a potential for growth and you enjoy the work environment that you have and it's a safe work environment for you, consider staying if you see a future with the company. Now, as for how long you should stay in a job, this is a tough one. 
I remember when I first became a barista, I was in my first job for two years and this was straight out of a corporate job that I had been in for eight years and I couldn't believe that I was getting paid to do the job of a barista. I was there for a couple of years and then I went to my next job and kept hopping jobs for six months, three months, six months, three months. And the reason was because I couldn't find an employer that I wanted to dig in my roots with. This was a really vibrant time in the Sydney coffee industry. We're talking about 18 years ago now. And the vibrancy of the scene here was this was the beginning of the specialty coffee movement here in Australia. And so much so that we didn't even know what it was called. We didn't know it was called specialty coffee for quite a few years. Now, back then, we had the world at our oyster. We could pick and choose. If you were a good barista, you could pick and choose what you where you wanted to work. But here's what I want to say to you if you're considering hopping from one job to the other, to the other, to the other. Get better at choosing your employers. Know what you want from a job. Know what you want from an employer and go in and ask for it at interview. Now, if an employer at interview says something to you like, actually, this is just a job. We're going to pay you minimum wage and we just want you to do the job. That's a clear indication for you. If you are a career barista and that's not what you're looking for, that's a clear indication for you that it's time to move on. Equally, if you are just looking for a job and at interview, the employer says to you, I'm looking for someone that's going to come in and take some leadership responsibilities and then give me some relief from having to manage this part of it so that I can go and work on the food menu. Well, you can make the decision then. Uh, And I'm guessing that if you just want a job, that's not going to be attractive to you. Somewhere in the middle of that is the employer that says, I'm looking for somebody who will take a leadership position and the starting salary is minimum wage. Now listen, if you're looking for a leadership position and you're not going to get paid adequately to do that, there's the red flag right there. So these things take time to learn. And that's why I was going from job to job to job to job. I didn't know how to ask questions at interview in the beginning of my career. I didn't know how to get the information out of my potential employer because I just didn't know. We didn't have a daily coffee pro. Uh, It was right at the beginning of, I hate to say this, this was right at the beginning of podcasting and the internet. (laughs) That shows you my age. (laughs) But that's just what the reality of it was. We didn't have these kinds of things. So please, stay in a job as long as it feels that it is meeting your needs and your employer's needs, but primarily your needs. Use your communication skills to let your employer know if something's going wrong And don't stay too long if your employer doesn't deliver on the things that they said that they would deliver on. And this is something that happens far too often in our industry. At interview, you get promised the earth and the moon and the stars and your employer doesn't deliver. One question that you can use at interview to really figure out if your employer is going to deliver or whether their promises are a red flag. And that question is, how do you intend on delivering this position? What's your rollout plan? So, for example, if somebody says to you, we're going to start you off as a barista, then we're going to transition you to the team leader or to the head barista position, and then we're going to get you to start coffee roasting if that's what your objectives are is to become a coffee roaster. That's the the discussion at interview. Your job is then to say, 
Could you explain to me what the steps that you're going to take are to execute that and what could prevent it from happening? Also, you want to ask what the time frame is and are they okay with you checking in at the halfway mark to see if we're on track for me to get to that position? These are all very reasonable questions to ask and an employer that cannot answer them does not deserve your time. If you want to stay in a position longer so that and, and if you're an employer that's listening to this, if you would like your baristas to stay in their positions longer, this is a level that you need to be at in order to attract talent these days. I hope this has been helpful, friends. Peace, love and peanut butter. Don't forget to subscribe and have an amazing rest of your day.